Hey guys, this is Aaron from Geek Element Development and welcome to our Xcode tutorials. And in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you part two of how to use constraints to create universal applications. Now in this video, much different from our previous one on constraints, but we're going to be looking at um, designing customizable or custom interfaces. Now before we showed you, if I bring up our project here, it's a simple single view application for the iPhone. I've simply named it Constraints Universal for the purpose of this tutorial. Now before, if I just jump into the main dot storyboard, this is a Swift project, but everything we're going to do will work exactly the same in an Objective C project. I'm just going to resize our screen here to the four, and there we go. Okay. So before then, we placed in some objects. Let's say we had our button in there. If I space that out. And let's say we have a label in there. And again, I space this out and center it. Uh, we had this and then we added some missing constraints. And then this allowed us then to, if I chose a different screen size, and it will resize it um, perfectly on the screen. And that works fine. But what happens when we have buttons or multiple buttons on the screen with multiple labels that um, you know the missing constraints doesn't really do what we want it to do? For example, if I got rid of these missing constraints here, and let's say I change the size of these labels here to there, and I pasted in now some more. Select these. Um, let's go to our objects out. I make the width of them all, let's say, by 150. So they all fit on the screen. And I'm going to center it to our application there. And if I go to add our missing constraints, adds them in, but if we chose to change our screen size now, it don't really do what we want in terms of how we want to resize them. I mean, you know, the space, there's gaps in the middle, it don't resize anything like that. So we're going to show you how to kind of configure this up. Now, if I just go back to the original screen size there, let's get rid of that. There's a brilliant little feature that allows us to do stuff like this within the assistant editor. Now, I'll show you that in just a second. So if we get our button and place it in, what I'm going to do is change the background color of the button. Let's go for black there so you can clearly see it. I'm going to space out the button here and we're going to have three of them in all together. And I'll just quickly center them there. Now again, if I add in missing constraints just to show you and then change the screen size, you see our middle one is much bigger than all the others, and we don't really want that to happen. We want it all to scale the same size and remain, um, you know, kind of equal in terms of that. And a brilliant way to do this, if I just get rid of the constraints now, clear these constraints, is bring up our assistant editor, and from within it, we select automatic and go down to preview main storyboard. Now this will give us a preview file of our view already. Now if we go to click the little plus symbol, and this shows the biggest iPhone screen there. Now let's get rid of this um, smaller one. You can see now on the bigger iPhone screen, if I'll just resize this here, you can see the buttons don't, you know, are spaced over to the left because we haven't added any constraints in yet. And again, if I added in the missing ones, it will update it and make that one bigger. So we're comparing the two screen sizes here and they, how they're going to interact. Now what we're going to do is add in the constraints manually. So we will click on our button, uh, right click or control click and drag it over to the side of our view and select lead in space to contain a margin. So as you're going to see now, it's going to look very messy in our preview here. But it will just take us a while to do this. We'll do the same again for the button but leading to the top. We'll do the top of this button to the top, the top of this button again to the top, and then this one to the right of the view. Now this sensor one, we don't want to link it to the sides of the view. What we want to do is link it to the object next to it, which happens to be the button. And we're going to select some horizontal spacing. The same thing goes for the button to the one on the right of it, horizontal spacing. Now as you see, now the one on the left has started to resize itself. So what we do is select again our button here, right click, control click and drag it over to the middle one and select equal widths. So now these two are the same size widths, but this one isn't. So then we'll select our middle button, which is already linked to an equal width on a different object. And we again, we set this one to equal widths. You can see now that they all resize perfect. 
They're the same size and they look just the same as they do on the smaller screen as they do on a bigger screen. So this is a great way to create the custom interfaces in terms of when you add these multiple buttons or if you've got more things on a screen that just adding missing constraints don't do. This is simply how you would do it manually. We can take this step further and we can do the same, let's say, with our image views. So if we drag an image view in, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. Uh, small enough that we can fit two on the screen. Now, there's two of these and these obviously, place that underneath, um, again, don't fit at all, won't resize. We don't have any constraints on them, but we only have two of these compared to the three buttons at the top. Now we're going to repeat the same process. We're going to drag it over, lead into the right, uh, left, sorry. Now this one leading to the right. And then what we're going to do for the top now is link it to a button above. So we can select this time, instead of horizontal, we can select vertical spacing. Same goes for this one, vertical spacing. Now we could link it to the middle one. It doesn't really matter. But because these are all linked up by constraints and this is in the same row, uh, it's going to link perfect. Uh, we're going to set some horizontal spacing in between both of them. And then we're going to have them both to have equal widths. And we're going to have them size by the aspect ratio. And again, this one, we right click and drag it to itself and it's going to resize by aspect ratio. So although they've got equal widths, we don't want them to have equal heights. Well, they are going to have equal heights because we selected aspect ratio, but we want them to resize um, themselves. And by selecting aspect ratio, it doesn't resize itself in terms of having equal widths like the button does. It will equally have the same um, width and height of it. So as you can see now that they again look identical. These, these interfaces are identical, even though this is the iPhone 5.5 inch screen and this is the iPhone 4. I could even bring up our 3.5 inch screen, which is on the left here. Let's get rid of our 5.5 there. And again, this is a much smaller screen than the iPhone 4 one we're working in now. And again, it all resizes itself to fit on perfect. So again, if I just get rid of that, and then add in our 5.5 screen. There we go. And now we're going to add in some, a few more objects. We're going to add in some labels. So if we place the label in, and now this label is going to be centered to the image view. And let's say we have four of them all in together underneath. So this is really a mishmash of different objects in different places on the screen. Nothing kind of identical, nothing that the missing constraints could kind of configure itself and display perfectly. So again, looking out of place on the um, preview of the large screen. But we just repeat the process again, adding these to the left-hand side, and then finally adding them to the right. Um, linking them to each other's self with some horizontal spacing. And then make sure we link them to the object above with vertical spacing. Same goes for the label underneath to the label above. And then what we're going to do there is have them both set to equal widths. And again, these two equal widths. And you can see now it's all resized quite nicely and they're on both sides of the screen. So we now we're creating, which kind of looks like in terms of, let's think of it as a newspaper, as its individual columns, sections, and stuff like that. And it's going to work perfectly on all size screens. Now you may be thinking, this is looking good on iPhones, but what happens when it comes to iPad? Now, again, we can simulate an iPad screen. So if I get rid of this, and there you go. I need to zoom out a bit here. It was quite hard to see. Now you may be thinking that these image views are huge compared to the ones on the iPhone. And you are right. That's because we selected these to have the aspect ratio size. Now, if we did select them to have, um, we've set them to have equal widths. If you set them to have equal heights, it's gonna resize anyway. It's just because the screen size is so big, when it starts to go in aspect ratio, they're gonna be huge on the iPad. So rather than linking them to have aspect ratio size like we did before, you can change them up to simply have equal widths and heights or anything like that um, for the sizes. But you can see there for the labels and the buttons, that the buttons and the labels are not resized by aspect ratio. This was just, again, just to quickly show you an example of doing it. But again, it resizes perfect on the iPad, if you can clearly see there. So again, we get rid of that and we bring up the iPhone 5.5 inch screen there. We zoom back in.
So as you can see then, we're creating custom interfaces by manually adding our constraints. Now, again, this will be perfect, not just for creating new applications, but if you guys have had previous applications already out, which you developed in, let's say, iOS 5, iOS 6, or iOS 7, and you've come to upgrade your application to iOS 8, and now you're starting to see these new larger size interfaces, you've already configured it to resize itself to a smaller screen, but now you've got these big, large ones. And Apple have now kind of integrated the ability to create an application for um, by using one screen size. As you can see, this this what we've created so far works perfect on every device. Uh, and yeah, this is like the perfect way to not only update your applications, your old ones, to make them work on the new screen sizes, but it's a more fluid and easy way to create customized um, and like you know, beautiful looking interfaces that you couldn't do before, or you found it quite difficult, or even the custom or adding, you know, adding the missing constraints just wasn't really cutting it. This is a way to control how each of your objects um, kind of reacts to change into different screen sizes. So I hope you guys got an insight into there and so how to add your own missing or your own um, custom kind of constraints. And hopefully you guys can, you know, use this ability um, to um, update your applications or even create and design nice looking interfaces. Uh, I'd just like to point out again, as you can see, nothing's in line. Even though these are in line here, these are at a scale. These are not linked up to like the borders of the interface, which it gives you. Again, this is just clearly showing you, uh, you know, objects all over the place uh, and you can add um, constraints and they resize perfectly on no matter what screen size. So I hope if this um, tutorial helps any apps or projects at the moment. I want to thank all you guys for watching and I'll see you all next time. Hey guys, just before we click off this video, I have a few more bits of information that I'd love to share with you. But just before I do, if this tutorial helped you in any way, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. And if you haven't, make sure you subscribe and follow us on social media. All the links will be in the description below. If you want more up-to-date and in-depth tutorials on iOS 8, Xcode 6 and the Swift language, then make sure you guys enroll in our complete iOS 8 and Xcode 6 course. The links will be in the description below. And if you guys want to learn on the go, make sure you download our Xcode tutorial application from the App Store where you can get much more than what we offer on YouTube. Again, links for this will be in the description below. And if you guys want to kick back and blow off a bit of steam, make sure you go check out my gaming channel where we have a lot of fun, play with a lot of friends and generally just have a good time. So make sure again, you go subscribe to that channel. But once more, I want to thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time.